In this video here, I'm going to talk to you about swing plane. It's an important skill in, in golf, and if you want to hit better shots, more solid contact, have better directional control, you're going to want to work on or practice getting your swing on plane. And I'm going to show some videos here from tour players, different tour players, and hopefully paint a good picture for you on how to separate what I'd call their style compared to the actual skill. So there's lots of ways to achieve the skill of swinging the golf club on plane and it's very important that you just maintain your style or don't get too focused on things that I'd refer to more as style components as opposed to skill. We're looking here at Adam Scott. Let's first just start by defining swing plane. So if you could imagine him standing up straight and if golf was played with a ball more up here, let's say at shoulder height or chest height, it'd be very obvious as to how you'd want to swing this your golf club. You'd be trying to swing, I'll try to put a line right here through the golf ball, you'd be trying to swing your club on a very flat plane, um, right level where the golf ball is. Now obviously that's not the way golf is played, the ball's on the ground, so instead of that flat swing plane, we're swinging, uh, for simplicity's sake, let's call it about a 45 degree plane. So if you look at this line that goes up the club shaft and through his belt buckle, that lower line would be our primary swing plane line. And then I've put a secondary one up here through his shoulders just to give us a shade of an area. So as Adam Scott starts swinging this club, and I, I chose Adam here because he's certainly right now, you know, one of these guys that you'd classify as one of the better swingers on tour. And so as he brings the club back to the top of his swing, he's right inside that shaded area. Now as he's coming down, this is the real important part that I want everyone to focus on, or this is what you want to develop in your golf swing. This club head coming down back behind your hands or even with your hands. See this club head is tracking right along that lower swing plane line here. This is a key part of your swing plane. So if you were to go and pull up, which we're going to do a bunch of different videos, this characteristic is what we're going to see show up over and over again from about halfway down, let's call this halfway down, into impact. This is where you really want to develop the ability to get the club in this position on plane and swinging from what would be called the inside coming through here into impact. There's lots of different ways to get this club back. There's, we're going to see some takeaways that are referred to as steep, some that are shallow or under plane. There's guys up at the top here with flatter swings, more upright, crossing the line. There's all sorts of jargon we can throw at you, but the most important part of your swing, how, what I want you to develop or focus in on, is from about hip height down through to impact, getting this club in a very good position on plane that then allows you to deliver consistent, solid strikes into the back of the golf ball. So let's just start running through a few people here. I'll keep... Um, We'll go ahead and keep Adam Scott over there on the left. Let's bring up this here. So here's Ray Floyd. So certainly a, a an older swing, let's say, not as good a quality video. But if you look at the difference in his characteristics, so here Ray Floyd brings this club way back, what would be called under plane. And as he goes up to the top of his swing, certainly looks a lot different than Adam Scott if I bring him back to this this spot here. In the, let's take Adam just to halfway back. And so the point I'm trying to make here is if you're someone that swings a little bit more like Ray Floyd back here and your club's under plane, well don't worry about it. That's not something to correct. It, it, it wouldn't be true to say well you've got to make sure you get your hands or that club head right in line with your hands. That's a preference. It's certainly not a skill. So as Ray Floyd goes back to the top of his backswing, he'd have a little bit more of an upright look there at the top of his swing. If you look at where his forearm is compared to Adam Scott, even look where the, that club is, you look at his back leg really straightening compared to Adam Scott. Now these are different eras of swings, but the most important part is where does Ray Floyd get this club on the way back down? Right on plane, right inside that shaded area club head close to being in line with his hands or even behind his hands and then he can deliver that club into the back of the golf ball. Let's bring up, we'll just kind of keep going through quickly here. So here's Kenny Perry. Let's put the same lines on him. Let's go back to green. 
So as Kenny Perry swings back. So if I was to compare Kenny Perry now to Ray Floyd. So Kenny Perry has that club head going in front of his hands going back. Ray Floyd's way back behind. Well, who's correct? I'd say they're both correct. These are just different styles that we're looking at. If you look at uh, Kenny Perry's shoulders compared to where Ray Floyd has his shoulders. No one's wrong, no one's right. Look where that club shaft is leaning, the differences. One, Kenny Perry standing straight up. We've got Ray Floyd leaning it back. But again, let's focus in on, well, even just so it jumps out at me here, if you look at the top of the swings. Kenny Perry, that club is pointed way off to the right, so you'd say, well, he's crossed the line here. But don't get bogged down on those styles. Where I want you working is, can you get this club back into this position, club head back behind your hands, delivering the club head from the inside? While I, I would agree that there's, there's preferences, you've just got to make sure we focus our time and where we're going to practice on, prioritize it, and put it on the correct thing. So if you've got 15, 20 minutes to practice, I wouldn't have you practice on getting the club parallel at the top because looking at these two examples, that's not going to guarantee anything. Take that 20 minutes and practice getting the club halfway down into your downswing in this position, that club head in line with your hands or slightly behind your hands, getting it, what the, the term you'll hear a lot is getting it in the slot and get very good at delivering that club from this inside path in a shaded area into the back of the golf ball. Let's pull up a couple more examples. Here's Matt Kuchar. So he has, a, I guess, a lot of weird things. You could certainly say that going on. His feet are off in one direction, shoulders in the other. He doesn't. He, the club is hovering off the ground, so that was a characteristic of Nicholas as well. That ball is positioned off the heel of his club. So all sorts of things all get asked on a daily basis from students. You know, where should, what should I do? Where should the ball be? And there, there's really no proper answer. These are all just style things. So again, Kuchar, club head coming back in front of his hands. But this is, would be a very flat. Look how flat his forearm is here. Let's put a, I'll just use a quickly a blue line. So when I say flat, there's his form is in a very flat position. We'll see in a second here with uh, you know a guy like Jack Nicholas, he will get his, his arm is a little steeper, more like this yellow line. I wouldn't say one's better than the other necessarily. These are styles. Now as Kuchar comes down, again, this is what the recurring visual we're going to see, this club at inside this shaded area, back behind his hands, into the back of the golf ball. Jason Duffner, a very different look, let's say, even here in his setup. Look how crossed his arms look. Takes it back, so this would be back behind his hands. But again, here's the important part coming down inside this shaded area as he comes down. Everyone likes to look at uh, Bubba Watson, obviously playing great, just winning the Masters a few weeks ago. So Bubba has a very steep takeaway. Look how far in front of the hands that club is. Look how upright his arm is here at the top of his swing. And now as he comes down, very similar though to all the other swings we've been looking at. Uh, here's Nicholas. A little older video, not quite as good a quality. But we'll get the, the same idea here. So as Nicholas comes back, deeper up. The one thing we'll see a lot with Nicholas, here's a, an elbow flying away from his body. So there's certainly tips you're going to see that'll tell you to tuck that elbow in. But again, that's just really a style. Focus your practice on the skills. And this is the important skill, staying inside that shaded area on the way back down. And here's usually a real fun one to look at is Jim Furyk. Let's go with green again, keep this consistent. And so Furyk has a lot of different motion going on in his swing, so he takes it back what would be a little bit under plane, and then he really stands that club straight up, so the shaft is straight up here. His arm gets extremely steep up there by his ear. But what makes Jim very good is that motion is repeatable every single time. It looks very similar, but again, look where he gets this club. He doesn't look a whole lot different than anyone else once we start down this important part from hip height into the golf ball. 
So all I'd really want you to take from this, go back to Adam Scott, is just make sure when you practice, you understand what you're trying to do, what you should be doing in your swing, what things are style, and what is an actual skill. From hip height down into impact, this is a skill of having your club on plane, which will result in more solid contact and better directional control and a better golf game. The rest